And you've got new blood like Billy Armstrong, as an example, coming in or, um, you know, Bill Zito going into Florida. Uh, that, yeah. That's a pretty good indication that NHL ownership groups have have gone over the retreads um, and they're more interested in some of the fresh ideas that are coming in. Well, well Dregs, when, I, when a guy like that goes into Arizona, does he say to the ownership and, and whoever put him in place, like, is this going to continue to be a clown show or can I have the funds necessary to build a winner? Because I, I, I want this job. They love to be in the group of guys called the NHL GMs. But if you're not going to let me have the assets and what I need, then this is pointless. Right. I, I think he was very straight and upfront with ownership in, in Arizona when, when he interviewed there. Um, you know, he put together a forensic presentation of what he believes is necessary to get the Arizona Coyotes back on a solid foundation. Um, but unfortunately, uh, and fortunately, if you're ownership, um, both sides agree that they've got to take it down to the wood and effectively start all over again. Uh, how they're going to be able to do that is, is going to be a challenge because there's some pretty hefty contracts there that aren't going to be easy to move. That's just the reality of the situation. Uh, probably priority one or near the top of the, the list of priorities is recouping those two draft picks. That's second and the first that Arizona yeah. has to forfeit for, you know, the, the, the wrongdoing around the, the upcoming draft. So he's hoping, of course, that he's going to parlay some of his playing assets into those two draft picks. But again, Bill Armstrong had an extensive plan for the Marula family when he met. I was told it was upwards of like 90, page, uh, 90 pages. And a lot of it would have been specific to, okay, Here's what we need to do to get this organization back on solid hockey footing. And then financially, when we get to that phase of where we've turned the corner, I'm going to need your support. Well, Darcy Kemper's name has been out there a lot. He's, I think, got yeah. one year left on his deal, right? But he yeah. has been a rock star the last two years when he's been healthy. Like, his numbers are off the charts. Yeah, I think yeah. it's two, Brian, two he's two got, years left on his deal. So why would he be available? Like, how, how does well, that make any sense? For that first it, rounder. That's that's the only way it makes sense. Because imagine, you know, Rick Tockett doesn't have much or any hair left, right? Like, he, he is going to be rubbing it right down to the wood if, you know, they do something with their goaltending. They, they move out Darcy Kemper. It's going to be tough, especially if you're successful – uh, from a management standpoint, and you know, you're moving out the big contracts like Ekman Larson, et cetera. You know, again, if the plan is is to be bad but try and be competitive through that process, you know, how do you do that with inferior goaltending? So I, I agree with Noodles. Um, you know, if the only way for you to get that first-round draft pick back is to throw Darcy Kemper into the mix, then begrudgingly and unwillingly, I guess you have to consider it. But I, I saw a video out of the Arizona Coyotes today with Bill Armstrong talking about, uh, about how much he loves Darcy Kemper. So that's either salesmanship at this stage or he really doesn't want to trade him. And it may boil, it may boil down to that. But it's one thing to go through a rebuild um, and, and have – you know, your coaching staff and everybody on board, but you want to keep it competitive. And you can't do that if your goaltending is no good. Well, and that's the – when I'm looking at Arizona, and it sounds like they're open for business on everyone that is 23 year old, years old and up type of thing uh, if you're going to take it down to the wood. Oliver ekman Larson is really interesting for me. Like, yeah. I, you know, I think his cap hits 8.25. Yeah, 8.25. But, like, he's 29 years old. He's a really good player. And I think yeah. he needs a, a, a change of scenery. I, I, I know that the league is, is trying to shed money, but I, I think there's a big market for a guy like that. Like, yeah. it depends on the asking price again because that's yeah. what they're trying to recoup. But there's got to be several teams that, that need a number one or a number two defenseman that can play a power play. And, I mean, this guy has scored, I believe – 20 goals multiple seasons like he's got a big shot he, he he's got a, a, all the tools uh, yeah. it'd be interesting to see if, if phoenix or i'm sorry arizona would part with him well i look i i, I think they have to consider it and there's certainly been enough speculation around you know the national hockey league to believe that that is the case but you know i also know that the new general manager had a conversation with oliver ekman larson's 
agent, uh, Kevin App, and told him that he doesn't he doesn't really want to trade him. Uh, again, it, it always depends on what's the rate of return. Um, when the manager is telling the agent he doesn't want to trade him, that doesn't sound to me like ownership was putting a tremendous amount of heat on the general manager to move out you know, those contracts. Although that's been the storyline all along, is that they, they want to get into the low 70s or high 60s, um, even lower than high 60s, if that is even doable. It's not doable if you're not willing to part with Oliver ekman Larson. Because I, I think I, I agree. I think you need to change the scenery, and I think that there'll be lots of interest. And, you know, this is just my brain uh, working the way it does, so this isn't inside information. But I, I wonder if the two Armstrongs, who know each other very well, who are tight in Doug and Bill, can maybe work together. If, if Doug Armstrong gets to a place, and he's got to be real close, where, you know, he knows he's moving away from Alex Petrangelo, does it make sense that you find a way to make a deal um, for Ekman Larson, you know, to, to, to come in there and, and fill part of that void. I'm not sure that it does because he's got other financial concerns in St. Louis that he's going to have to look after. But uh, I got to believe that there'll be a strong market for OEL. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a great player.